And the newness of the journey of being in music was the luster, that, the newness, the honeymoon was off and I was really paying attention to the art. And that song really made me listen, okay, you know. So, yeah, and to me, that started me on the journey to what I now call rock with a positive vibe. That's my, that's my approach to music. So I, I like to write rock, folk rock, indie rock, you know, pop rock, blues rock, uh, Americana rock. Um, but it's all, to me, there's a connotation to it um, that I'm either thinking about being a better person or I'm trying to help other people think about being a better person or making the world a better place in some way, or maybe just celebrating something that's fun, right? Uh, that, that brings some joy you know, into the world, that, that sort of theme. everyone and welcome to a new episode of set lusting bruce your podcast all about bruce springsteen his music and mostly his fans i am your host jesse jackson today we are getting off the bruce springsteen train though i'm sure he will come up because he normally does and i am talking to another musician mark winters mark is here to talk a little bit about his music and a special um fundraiser he's involved in. So welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you very much for having me, Jesse. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, I am a singer, songwriter, uh, and a member of a band in uh, beautiful Houston, Texas. Uh, nice. Yep, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be. Uh, it's a, a central part of the U.S. It's kind of nice and warm. I'm not a cold weather person, so uh, I like it uh, to be kind of more tropical, and Houston kind of fits that bill. Um, I, uh, I uh, have been in, uh, involved in music uh, myself personally since 2011. So I started a little later in life than most um, and uh, started playing out in a cover band and I uh, really found as I was uh, on my musical journey, uh, as I started to sing, that it was very difficult for me to sing lyrics that I didn't agree with. And uh, probably, probably because I, I've been a poet my whole life and uh, you know, I, words matter to me uh, and so as I was singing uh, cover songs, I, I found, oh, well, uh, I got to find some different cover songs uh, to sing because I didn't I like the lyrics or the delivery. Uh, that kind of led me to writing my own music. Uh, and I put my first album out in, in 2019. Um, probably poor timing because of COVID because I was uh, starting to tour behind it and uh, then uh, everything stopped in the live music world. Uh, but I'm a positive guy. I find the, the positive in all that. So uh, I pivoted out of that in the middle of COVID and learned to live stream. And uh, I did about 15 charity live streams. And I really enjoyed that. Learned to live stream. I did ticketed shows. Uh, I raised about uh, $15,000 for uh, the food bank and Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, and an, an animal charity. Um, and um, I guess that was a, sort of a, a, my way to give back to the community as well as to learn you know, how, to, how to be more uh, online and engaging. Now, coming back out of COVID, here I am with a new album and uh, getting ready to tour behind it and uh, finding some charities to support along the way. Uh, in my other life, I was uh, uh, an entrepreneur and I spent time you know, in the tech, uh, medical tech startup world and uh, medical services world and um, learned a lot, uh, made a lot of mistakes, did some things right um, and uh, built uh, some experience there. And so I've been a coach. Uh, I give back my time, I donate my time 
uh, once a week at uh, the Texas Medical Center Innovations Institute. And I, I coach companies in the life sciences area, uh, typically medical devices or tech startups, sometimes therapeutic companies. Um, and so uh, I kind of have two worlds, you know, the science side of me, uh, the business side of me, and the musician and, and the poet. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Well, interesting. Um, you know, it's funny. I've had a couple of people on the podcast that are musicians, and that's a common theme. How do you promote a new CD, a new album, when, you know, the traditional manner, right, is you you have your digital, but you also have a few hard copies, right? And you get in your little vehicle, you drive to a local pub, you go to different, you know, uh, venues that support singer-songwriters, you, uh, you play your gig, and then, you know, afterwards you sit there with your thing and like, oh, I hope I sell enough CDs to pay for the tank of gas <laughs> to get to my next gig. And hopefully, right, that they'll come back later and um, you know, look for your music. Um, when you can't do that, it's a little bit tougher, isn't it? It, it is. That's a, you know, the whole paradigm in music has shifted. Um, you know, you know, it used to be you know when when you were uh, supporting yourself financially as a musician, you know, selling albums was a big part of your income, and that was yeah. the only only way people could listen to your music. You know, today, um, streaming services make music available everywhere. That's the, that's the beauty of them. Uh, the downside yes. is the financial model, you know, that doesn't work for an artist to earn a living off of stream, streaming revenue. Most artists can't do that. So, no. you, know, you do have to tour behind it. Um, and yeah. live shows and performances, uh, merchandise and tickets, uh, that's, that's typically the way that you monetize your your music project. So it's a different model today. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning, Mark. Yeah. Talk about where did you grow up and what kind of music did your family listen to when you were growing up? Uh, you know, um, my dad was in the military. So uh, we okay. spent time uh, in the South mostly. So uh, we spent time, uh, in, I was born in New Orleans and okay. uh, moved to uh, North Carolina and then Mississippi and Alabama uh, and then ended up in Texas uh, in high school and spent time in high school, uh, spent, did college and high school in, in Texas. Um, you know, my parents, um, you know, they were uh, both, you know, fairly eclectic in their music uh, interests. Uh, I, you know, we listened to, uh, you know, some, more rock music, some R and B music, some crooner music. Uh, you know, uh, I I enjoy personally classical music and um, you know operas and other styles of music. Uh, so I'd say pretty eclectic. Yeah, uh, probably a common theme. More was uh, you know everybody likes to dance in my family. So okay, that's got a good dance rhythm. We could all get into. You know, did uh, how long were you in New Orleans? Uh, I was only there uh, maybe six years when I was very young. Uh, my mm -hmm. dad taught uh, pharmacology at Tulane. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was for what kept us there. And he ended up taking a position at the Medical College of Virginia in Richmond. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and he taught there and he became an MD there as well. Uh, and that's sort of what pulled us out. And he joined the Air Force when he went to Virginia. Okay. Um, my, I'm a military brat too. Uh, my parents met while he was stationed in Fort Polk, Louisiana. Um, he's, we spent a lot of time in Fort Knox in Kentucky. Um, so time in Germany, we were stationed in Germany. So yeah, I, I, I know that roaming lifestyle as a child, as a military brat. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when, so it sounds like music has always been part of your life. Um, and you've shared a little bit about this, but Mark, when did, like, when did you decide you wanted to make music? And it sounds originally you started as like a musician um, in a cover band, but like, talk about your first bands and, and why, why you felt this need to be musical. Yeah, um, so uh, I guess it started somewhat when I was a really small child, maybe four or five. My, my grandmother taught me 
to write poetry. Okay. Uh, she was amazing. Um, as a matter of fact, she's one of the reasons I'm doing this, this, uh, this charitable uh, work with uh, this Music Beats Cancer uh, program that we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, she taught me to write poetry. She taught me to paint. She taught me to love mm -hmm. the arts in a lot of ways. Um, and so I've always, you know, written a little poem to a friend, uh, you know, or to someone that I care about, you know, in my journey through life. And so I've always been expressing myself, but, you know, never anything, you know, that I, I wouldn't recite poetry. I wouldn't go to a, you know, a reading room or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was a part of my life. Um, and so I, I'd say, uh, you know, when I, when I first, uh, well, I had lots of opportunities in my journey to be in a band. And music has always moved me and I always thought about it, but I never did it. I always had friends who were musicians. Uh, a really good buddy of mine was a great drummer in high school and yeah. did some books in college and whatever, but I never did it. Um, and then uh, in 2011, um, I really wanted to make a special anniversary for my wife. And so I decided, okay, stop procrastinating, dude. Go buy yourself a guitar, learn to play a song and sing a song for your wife for your anniversary. Uh, and so that's where I really stepped out. I uh, went to a local guitar shop here. This great guy, uh, Steve Stein, uh, Steve uh, owns a, uh, a uh, guitar shop here in Houston called Smack Guitar. Okay. Uh, and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a, a guitar I've never played before, don't know anything about it, never done anything musical. Um, I'll even buy the upgraded model, the nicer is a Takamini uh, acoustic. I'll even buy the nicer one that looks nicer. Oh, so nice. Extra. But you have to agree to teach me to play this song um, and to sing the song because I'm going to sing it for my wife for our anniversary. Uh, and so that really got me sort of on the road. Um, and I, what song? Did I miss that? Or I didn't tell you that. Yet. Okay. See, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, there's a band called Tesla. Okay. Uh, and Tesla has a song called What You Give. Um, and the, the chorus, it, it's not what you got. It's what you what you give. It's not the life life you know you lead. It's the life you give, right? And so, to me, it was a very I'm a I'm a big believer in you know, being a giving person, mm -hmm. connected to the people around you. And that was a very meaningful song for my wife and I when we were dating. Uh, so I decided, okay, I'm going to learn that song. It has a really cool "Wish You Were Here" style riff in the Ooh, front of it. Okay, it's really cool, um, but it's difficult to play. Uh, little did I know. <laughs> so, I, I've been off uh, quite a bit uh, learning that song, but uh, it turned out great. I, we, we were in this uh, uh, Italian restaurant and um, my wife came and she didn't know I learned it. So I, I bought the guitar and I learned the song. I gave Steve and I worked for uh, six, six weeks for me to learn this thing. I had to do it okay. all sort of on the QT. And then I got my guitar. Uh, well, then, I, then uh, my wife and I went to dinner and I said, oh, I left something in the car, sweetie. Uh, so then I went back and grabbed my uh, guitar, came back in, and she says, what are you doing? What is that? Yeah. Said, <laughs> and I'm going to play you a song. She's like, what? Uh, so uh, anyway, so that, there's a whole story behind that. But it went well. Uh, I really fell in love with the, the, the connection, right? I was singing this song to her, and I was just connected. And it was just, it was the most beautiful thing for me to experience is sharing you know, something like that with someone else. And that really got me hooked. And that's when I started looking for other people to play with. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm a little bit more interested, like, and I don't, if, if I don't want to hurt any songs feelings. <laughs> so if you don't want to be specific about songs you were singing that you felt, eh, I just don't know if I, agree with the lyrics but if you don't want to give a specific song can you give me some just general maybe themes or if you want to call out a specific song that's okay <laughs> it was it was a sensitive moment for me okay uh, so you know uh we would cover you know maybe an eagle song which is nice and you know yeah. so, you know etc we were going and then um there's this really cool vibe to the song called santeria okay uh, right and, you know, there's just parts of it I just, I couldn't sing myself. Um, you know, I, it, it was got a really cool vibe to it. I, I mean, the song is really well done. It's a great, you know, piece of music. Yeah. Uh, it really, that song made me really 
open my ears, right? And the newness of the journey of being in music was the luster, that the newness, the honeymoon was off and I was really paying attention to the art. And that song really made me listen, okay, you know? So, yeah, and to me, that started me on the journey to what I now call rock with a positive vibe. That's my, that's my approach to music. So I, I like okay. right? rock, folk rock, indie rock, you know, pop rock, blues rock, uh, Americana rock. Um, but it's all, to me, there's a connotation to it um, that I'm either thinking about being a better person or I'm trying to help other people think about being a better person or making the world a better place in some way. Um, or maybe just celebrating something that's fun, right? Uh, that, that brings some joy you know, into the world, that, that sort of theme. Um, but that, that song was the, was the sentinel moment for me to think, okay. And I redid my set list, uh, my own personal you know, solo performance set list, you know, looking for songs that had a positive uh, you know, vibe to them. Um, like, uh, like Ben Rector, he has a song, right? Brand mm -hmm. new, you know, it's a cool song, right? It makes you feel you know, like you're just feeling yeah. good. It's got a great melody, it's catchy. Um, you know, Jason Mraz has some great songs. Uh, that I love to cover as well. Um, you know, so I, I say I pull from my, my influences uh, as a writer, maybe Tom Petty, uh, because of his simplistic ability to just deliver something in a, in a very simple way that connects with everyone. He just had a great way to do that. Um, John Mayer, I love his style of guitar. Uh, so he's a big influence of mine um, in how I, think about music or guitar solos or playing music uh, on my guitar. Um, and then Jason Mraz, you know, has some generally very, you know, positive mm -hmm. vibes to his music uh, and a good positive delivery. Uh, and those would be my influences in my writing now um, as I approach you know, my own work. So since you had done poetry, I had enjoyed poetry as a child and as you continue to grow was it an easy transition to make that poetry become lyrics and then find the way to write the melody with it or which was the talk about that transition the chicken or the egg yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah no I think uh, um, for me uh, the the words and the meaning are where my songs start. You know, so like I, I wrote a song called Be There on my first album. And okay. uh, I was sitting in a restaurant and I was looking around and my wife and I were talking and like 80% of the restaurant was mm -hmm. looking at their phone or the TV. Sure. Like, you know, here we are out to dinner and we're supposed to be spending time with one another. Yeah. You know, am I am I doing that right? Am I am I looking yeah. at my phone when I'm not supposed to? Right. So right. I wrote this song called "Be There." Right. Eyes on eyes, hand in hand, with me. Be there. Right. That's the chorus. Uh, and so, to me, the the emotion of "Be There" is where I started. And I'm like, okay, you know, what does this mean to me? Um, and so I, I started constructing the, the words and the lyrics, and that was easy. Um, the feeling and the mood of the music, I, I can get that kind of going. The hardest thing for me, Jesse, was really getting the melody because I hadn't, I hadn't written melodies, mm -hmm. right? I'd written poetry and I'd written guitar parts and I'd done guitar solos, but I hadn't really, I hadn't really written guitar solos. I'd played other people's guitar solos, right? I'd sung other people's melodies, but I'd not really written my own, so. That was a really crazy journey. I'm still learning. Um, and I'd say um, I, I'm, I'm getting better at, at how your melody can support the delivery of the emotion, right? Yeah. Do you, do you write as a duo? Do you, do you have, do, have you tried to work with other partners or, or is writing music a solo thing to you? Um, I would like to write music with other people. Yeah. Uh, I haven't yet. Um, probably uh, just the way my journey has turned out. Yeah. You know, the, the, the band that my, the first cover band I was with, uh, a great group of guys, we're still really good friends. 
um, you know, we actually wrote an original song together mm-hmm. and they were all the three of the other guys in the band were 20 year music veterans. They'd done everything. Right. Um, and so yeah. they were way better than I was. And so I was just sort of hanging on, <laughs> you know, to the ride and learning, sure. uh, you know, from them. So I didn't really, I wasn't even a peer, you know, so as I was thinking about writing music, we, at the very end of our, we were playing together maybe four years at the very end, we wrote a few songs together and I got okay. to spin around a little bit in a collaboration mode, but I didn't speak the language. So that the very first thing I did when I made the decision that I was going to be a writer, Jesse, is I went to this place online called, uh, U D E M Y. I say it as Udemy. I don't know how okay. what the right way to say it is. Um, I bought a music theory course for nine dollars. College one and college two music theory uh, is video based with some instruction manuals or whatever. I just sat on my computer and went through class and mm-hmm. learned music theory. Taught myself uh, from these videos, and then I, I bought another course on you know music, uh, yeah, digital audio recording. Um, and learned how to use logic. Uh, and that became my palette. And, and really, I started learning from there um, how to construct a song. Uh, and my first producer, Mark Townsend, uh, with Channel Land Records, um, when I talked to him, you know, he'd worked with other new artists like me who had these raw concepts. Uh, and so I got my songs where I thought they were pre-production <laughs> ready. Uh, and then we spent, I spent time with the real producer um, and he helped me actually get the structure that I really needed around my songs. Um, you know, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a stubborn guy. I'm like, okay, uh, you know, treat me like a peer. If I've got something that's wrong, just tell me to go fix it. Don't fix it for me, right? Even though right. you might know how to fix it, right? Yeah. I gotta learn. Um, Do you... So, to interrupt, not to interrupt, but do you think that's partly because of the day gig and that during your day gig as a consultant, you're, you're teaching people how to fix things themselves versus you just fixing it for them? Uh, could, could be. I'm a teach a man to fish person, right? I yeah. mean, I think that's important for everyone. Uh, and I was an operator for my, the first part of my career. So I'm used mm-hmm. to taking the reins and making the show happen. Um, so, you know, and it's important for me that, you know, whatever you're doing, like if I'm talking to a startup company, right? Um, and, you know, they're a digital tech company and they don't understand digital marketing, you know, well, you know, that's just effort, right? Go, you, you know, you can't be, a, <laughs> you can't be a, a digital solution and not understanding how digital marketing works and customer acquisition works, right? And customer conversion, you've got to understand that. It's, it's, a, it's a fundamental in your business. So go learn how to do it, right? You, could, you can hire somebody, right? And, and, and you're sort of, you know, abdicating to them, right? To do it, which yeah. is, in my opinion, not helpful if you want to be successful. You really need to understand it well enough. You don't need to be an expert, right? But you need to understand it and be fundam- have the fundamentals, you know, at your fingertips, uh, so for me, um, I didn't have that when I started in my music journey. You know, today uh, I, I took a, uh, I've, I've gone through this series um, uh, on YouTube. It's really kind of cool. It's Melodic Pathways. I did it maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. R- really great uh, music theory application, right? How do Melodic Pathways move through chord structures? You know, what in Western music, how does it, you know, what are your options and, and how does that, you know, sort of land, you know, as you're delivering words with it and to, to yeah. me, it's super helpful. Now I, I speak the language at least. Right. <laughs> um, and so I'm on the journey to learn how to deliver a better melody uh, for my songs um, that, that helps support the, the emotionality that comes with the lyrics that I wrote. You know, a couple of things and, um, I have, a, I have a story back in the day. I, I worked for a company that uh, did software for the apartment communities, uh, how to manage their business and um, did all kinds of, you know, different suites of programs. And, and um, we were, I was on a conference with a client and I had someone from the development team on this conference call and um, 
our client was arguing that um, this should be a higher priority. And the developer said, well, the workaround, um, and it was a leasing program, the workaround is that, uh, or a payment that someone can drop their check off at the office. And my client says, if the name of your product has online in it, <laughs> manually dropping off a check cannot yeah. be a viable workaround. <laughs> Jesse, I love I love that perspective. Yes, right. Uh, be be true. Be true to your mission yeah. and your statement. Yes. And so I I looked over at the developer and I'm like, she's got a point, yeah. right? <laughs> if we are selling that, you know, you're going to do this. Um, so that that's my first thought. I I just love that. Do I? I am a lot of people that I've worked with over the years um, will, in fact, um, I, I was in a meeting with a company and we had just been purchased by a private equity firm. And they were announcing that and there was an all hands meeting and uh, the, the head of the private equity firm was telling a story that he was going to buy a ping pong table for our office because his company always has a ping pong table and that they they use that to relax they use that like if they're having a problem they'll go and play a game on ping pong to kind of clear their minds and he says and sometimes when we're really stuck and we have two different people pushing an idea we'll actually have a game to see who will win. So I thought that was a pretty interesting story. So we're, they're mingling afterwards and everything. And so I went to this, the uh, head of the private equity firm and I go, hi, I'm Jesse Jackson. And he goes, oh yeah, you're in customer service, right? And I go, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I run the tech support team. I said, I loved your ping pong story. I said, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but early in the days of the E Street Band, they were touring and there was a ping pong table backstage. And uh, some of the band members were playing and Bruce got on stage and looked and a couple of the band members had not heard that the show was starting and were still playing ping pong. So two things came out of it. One, no ping pong tables are allowed backstage. <laughs> and, and two, even to this day, Bruce and the band kind of do a circle and do kind of a prayer or chant and then go on stage together. And so the, you know, the guy was like, oh, that's a pretty interesting story. And my boss says, you really can find a way to put Bruce Springsteen in any damn story you want. <laughs> uh, I a, said, a, yes. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome story, Jesse. Yeah. So do you find a way to put music in your day job and when you're working as a consultant or doing that, do you find a way to weave? Because I, I believe stories are the best way to learn, right? I, I, you know, I go back to, I remember I had a, I grew up in the Baptist church and I remember someone talking about that, you know, parables are just stories that teach us lessons and, you know, quote unquote, Jesus was one of the best salespeople of all times and he did it by telling stories. So I don't know about how you, when you're working with your team and, you know, with your working with your clients. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so today, you know, most of the time uh, I'm volunteering my time yeah. uh, for startup companies that are uh, in the early stages of developing uh, some kind of new tech. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm doing that, um, you know, I do pull from all of my experiences. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes people relate better to uh, maybe, you know, a company example. Yeah. Com technology or Beth. Yeah. Right. And so this is how we did it. Uh, sometimes like when we're talking about something that's newer, right. When we're talking about, you know, digital marketing, uh, I can pull from my music project and say, okay, you know, here's mm -hmm. how digital marketing works. Sure. How, you know, a, a direct to consumer uh, yeah. program works. Right. Uh, sometimes I can pull stories and lessons from the culture of 
a, a band or even a brand, right? If you're talking yes. about a brand like Bruce Springsteen and his band, they have a certain brand that goes yes. with them, right? Hardworking, yeah. American, you know, grit. That's just his thing, right? Right. Uh, that's just my view of his thing, anyway. Yes. Uh, I like the brand of his band. Um, and so, you know, from a culture point of view, uh, you know, every entity, whether it's a band or a company, has a culture. Um, you know, if, it, if they're running a positive culture, like Bruce seems to be for his band, right, then you take a negative, like somebody not showing up on stage on time, mm -hmm. right, and you put it in into a huddle and a mindfulness exercise where everybody's there and present, you know, and ready yeah. to perform together, right? That's a great cultural shift, right? And that's a great story. Yeah. So, Mark, and I want to get to the fundraiser, but I have one more kind of work question and then I want to talk more about your music, but what led you to having this desire to work with startups? What, what about, why did you make this change in your career that at this point you felt like that was where your, your business heart was taking you? Um, you know, Jesse, I, I, uh, um, I've been, you know, fortunate in, areas of my life um, where I have the ability, you know, to give back to people. Uh, and so, you know, one of the ways in which I think is the most useful for everyone is to have a mentor that is, is there to help them. And, you know, for me, you know, I've, I've been through a number of different new businesses, you know, fresh off the ground, all the way to the point where we sold a business, um, or split a business out into different divisions. And so I've lived, you know, a lot of these uh, heart-wrenching, difficult, you know, operation and, you know, growth and turmoil that goes with it uh, and the cultural elements that go with keeping a team together. And so, you know, for me, uh, there's some things I wish I could have done better, right? And so I, I, wanna, I wanna take those things that I, I've learned that I felt like worked really well uh, or things that didn't work well at all. And I want to make sure people, other people don't do them. So to me, it's a part of giving back and making the world a better place. And, and I found this juxtaposition um, in the healthcare world because I have a lot of healthcare background, right? So I've, I've been in healthcare services and technology and manufacturing and devices. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the arena. The Texas Medical Center here in Houston happens to be the largest medical center in the world. And it has this giant innovation center right in the middle of it. I didn't even know it existed uh, okay. until I started doing the coaching. Uh, and so I sort of fell into this mentorship role there. Um, and I do similar thing at Baylor. Uh, Baylor University has a, an angel network um, and companies come through there that you know, get early stage investments and we get a chance to, you know, to help them and coach them along the way as well. And so I found it very rewarding for me. Um, to be in a, in a coaching environment to try and help other people find success and, you know, avoid pitfalls. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I'm not sure, you know, I guess, uh, you know, when, when we sold our last company uh, and everyone else, you know, all, we all sort of started doing other things. Uh, to me, that was an important part of what I wanted to do was to give back to my community and, the health and life sciences community was a part of that that journey for me. Okay, very nice. All right, let's talk. Um, you're involved in a fundraiser. Share me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, so um, you know, I, uh, I I met this this fascinating person, Mona, um, who runs uh, a charity uh, called you know Music Beats Cancer, um, and it's really you know. A, it's really an interesting organization. Uh, I would say maybe one you might imagine after talking with me for a little bit, uh, that's sort of almost tailor-made uh, for me yes. uh, as a person, right? Uh, because it, it, it really, uh, you know, the purpose for Music Beats Cancer is to find early stage scientists, innovators who have an idea that they need to flesh out to see whether or not they, they have something that can impact uh, a patient 
in a positive way that has cancer. So they may okay. have a device, they may have a drug, they may have technology, um, and um, you know, they, they have this concept and they may even have experience you know, commercializing that concept, but you know, to get from the idea stage to a, a stage that's bankable, that someone would put money behind to help you further the journey, there's this gap, right? Where you can't afford to do animal trials. You can't afford to hire people. You can't afford to patent something, right? You know, so we're talking, you know, uh, thousands and you know, tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes in the beginning of a project that, that these great ideas never get brought forward to see whether they're actually gonna be useful in the fight against cancer. And so Mona, um, you know, she recognized that she herself has a, a similar, you know, uh, you know, background. You know, she's had science in her background, and I think you know from her point of view, you know, she she recognized this gap also, and um, you know, so she has this really unique funding strategy to create awareness for um, cancer research that needs to be done. Right. And so to create the awareness, uh, she combines her love of music and the arts with, you know, this, the cancer therapeutic area, um, you know, for, you know, the recipient of, of donations. Uh, and so for me, you know, we're, we're moving the fight forward for cancer. We're also, um, you know, creating a startup environment that, you know, that needs to be funded and that needs research dollars. Uh, to help uh, impact, you know, the, the treatments that were available right now. Um, and so Music Beats Cancer is sort of this interesting juxtaposition of the two worlds that I live in, right? Uh, you know, innovations and, and research uh, and commercialization and, and you know, uh, the fight against cancer and music uh, together. Uh, so for me, I, I found a great, you know, charity to work with, and I'm excited, you know, to create some awareness, you know, for the program there. All right, so um, I'm going to include the link in the show notes, but tell them where to go uh, to donate. So uh, you can go to, to musicbeatscancer.org. That's M-U-S-I-C-B-E-A-T-S-C-A-N-C-E-R.org. Um, and then forward slash artist, A-R-T-I-S-T, forward slash mark dash winters and you'll see a, a landing page there um, with my bio um, and some thoughts from me uh, I've had some family members uh, who've had cancer um, and have benefited from the therapeutics work that did get funded um, and so to me my grandmother was one of those um, you know Dean winters who taught me you know to write poetry um, and was a, a big part of, of my life. And, and so it's a very meaningful area for me as well to support. Yeah, I um, five years ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer, um, had to have surgery, then uh, rounds of chemo. Um, and uh, I've told the story multiple times, so I won't bore my listeners again, but um, it, there was a Sunday afternoon. I was in the hospital waiting on surgery. A lot of things had gone wrong. And um, I was just in a dark, dark place. And I, um, I pulled up my phone and I created an F cancer playlist. And I started picking all these songs that I, I had already on my phone that were up joyous you know obviously a lot of Springsteen um mm -hmm. Sarah Hickman who is a singer songwriter from the Austin area that she used to be in Dallas work friends with her I just a bunch of other songs that just brought me joy and I started I put my head under the covers and I started listening to that playlist and um through all my rounds of chemo um I never listened to a podcast I didn't read a book I just closed my eyes and put that F cancer playlist on my, you know, phone with the headphones on and just lost myself in the music. Um, I truly think that's music is magic. That's one of the reasons why 
I love doing this podcast to talk to people about the power and magic of music. And so I think this is a great opportunity for my listeners to, you know, throw a few bucks that way, just because it's a good cause and it's uh, it's right down our alley. So uh, I'm excited that you were on here to tell me about it. And I'm hoping you get a lot of success. Yeah, I think Jesse, you're, you're right. I think, um, you know, music is magic. Uh, it, you know, it's amazing. I, I get, personally, I get no greater joy after I perform the song when someone comes up to me and tells me, you know, I really needed to hear that at this point in my life, um, you know, that my music has moved somebody. Um, I think you're right, music music has some, you know, very interesting healing qualities to it um, in your mind as well as your body. Um, I know people like my grandmother or you wouldn't be here if yeah. this cancer research had, I mean, your, the music is helpful. You know, if you think about the chemo you were getting, that chemo had to be invented by somebody. Exactly. Right? You know, and so, you know, my grandmother, bless her heart, she had lymphatic cancer. Um, she got a treatment, went in re remission for 15 years, 15 years. Then she got another treatment and got another 15 years of life. Mm. So she, she lived a, a very long life um, because of innovation. And there was just sort of in time for her you know, to get the next level of innovation. Um, you know, and, uh, and she had her, her book of, uh, of healing thoughts. So for her, she was a very religious woman. So she had her re religious thoughts, just like your playlist, Jesse. And yeah. She, she was, she was chanting that mantra the whole time. Right? Yes. Uh, and that, that really gave her some strength that when she needed it, you know, that that's, that's a wonderful story. All right. Talk to me about, First off, tell me about the first album and then promote the new upcoming album. Talk to me a little bit about some of your music. Very good. Well, uh, my first album, so, so as you've heard, I'm a bit uh, of a science guy. Yes. Uh, my undergrad actually is aerospace engineering um, and uh, I have a graduate degree in business and finance. But uh, So I'm going to pause you right there. Yeah. I will send you a link. I had a, um, a guest joined me about a year ago but she a uh, huge leonard cohen fan yep. but um she was talking about she her big passion and now she does, is space law <laughs> so space law. all right yes and i've had uh, and i've had a um a uh an engineer uh from um a um about and i talked about that she's been on the show too about uh air uh, you know uh, uh i'm saying this wrong but like outer space engineering right this thing yep. and so um so that's that's pretty cool but that that is a long that that you do not go a b c okay yeah. let me get this uh degree in uh you know astrophysics and then or you know what on and moving on engineering yeah. to hey let's make a pop album yeah Exactly. You know, I'm, a, I'm an eclectic person. I think I, I feel I like I've that. lived like 10 lives, you know, but yeah. uh, so anyway, so, so why I brought it up was because my first album is titled Slipstream. Oh, right? nice. Uh, so Slipstream uh, was my first album. And that song, that, that, uh, that, that album, uh, the scientific or mathematics or aer aerospace engineering behind a slipstream, uh, and you can think about, um, you know, the things that are behind an object that's flying are working not as hard as the thing that's in the front, right? So if you think okay. about it, geese flying in a formation, right? Yes. Uh, the front guy is working the hardest because he's breaking through the wind, right? And the guy right behind him is sort of drafting behind him, right? Which is okay. why cyclists ride in a peloton, right? Or yes, exactly. Fly, fly tight like that or trucks driving a convoy. Um, because it's more efficient. So Slipstream to me is sort of uh, my view that, you know, I got a chance to work with some amazing people, my producer, uh, great people in the studio. They really helped me create, you know, a mm -hmm. work of art. Um, and I couldn't have done it if I wasn't riding in their Slipstream, right? Because yeah. I was really benefiting a lot from all these wonderful people around me who helped me, uh, you know, pr pr produce this great album. Um, and so for me, it was a bit of an experimental album. So you'll find 
um, some story-based songs. Like uh, I, I was out hiking in the mountains of Norway and I met this dude named Yarle of all things, who's this, you know, buff Nordic hiker who's like hiking straight up this mountain. Uh, and he had these cool stories to tell and these beautiful vistas. And so I wrote a song called Yarle's Mountains about the guy I met there. Um, there's some, uh, another, you know, sort of uh, Nordic song I wrote is about uh, uh, finishing your journey to Vikinghood by jumping in a fjord, which my mm. wife did incidentally. Um, okay. And it's this screaming guitar solo and it's got this, you know, really frigid cold style to it. Um, and then there's some more melodic songs in there. So, you know, from, from the rock rocker side to something that's a little more, you know, melodic, like uh, there's a song about waiting, you know, where you're just, just like terminally waiting on everything. It's a very dreamy song. Okay. Um, and uh, Copper Queen, which is probably the crowd favorite. Um, I, I love women with copper colored hair, that red meets blonde combination. Um, and that's the color hair my wife has, incidentally. Uh, and so I wrote this song about the surfer girl, uh, windsurfing uh, with copper, you know, copper hair. Um, that's called Copper Queen. It's kind of a, more like a pop, you know, beach tune. Um, so I was experimenting around. I even have a, a little small rap song in there, Life of Three. It's got some melody lines and some rap lines in it. Um, so I was kind of finding my footing, um, you know, Jesse, for my first album. Yeah. Uh, and then I put a few singles out uh, behind that, uh, Find My Love, which is a little more, you know, you know uh, more of a pop melody or Americana mm -hmm. style. Yeah. Uh, and then Red, which is an aggressive rock song. Um, and then leaning, which is more Americana. Okay. Uh, and so as I headed into this next, this, this album that's coming out March 11th, um, as, as I was writing during COVID for that, um, you know, I felt like, you know, my lane was, you know, in this Americana or indie rock category, you know, not quite as, you know, I don't have any pop songs there. Right. Uh, you have a, a few acoustic songs there. Uh, but uh, the first song I put out, uh, the, the first single from the album is called Signal. I released that earlier this year in January. Um, and it's about putting it out positive signals in your life and taking positive signals in and making sure that you're being mindful of that. Um, and uh, this next, this latest, this latest single I just released called Boundary Layer um, is about breaking through boundaries in your life. Uh, maybe boundaries you put on yourself or other people put on you. Um, and so, you know, the theme for my music continues to be, you know, trying to, you know, encourage people to be better, myself or, or others. Um, and so I think the, you know, this, this latest album is titled Boundary Layer. Um, you know, the title song is also called Boundary Layer. Um, but it, it also has a mathematical connotation, right? Because the boundary layer, uh, as you approach an object, you know, in a fluid stream, the particles start slowing down as they get close to the surface. And they, they, they sort of stop. And it's almost like they have to decide a new direction to go as they get close to the surface, right? And so um, for me, breaking through boundaries in your life feels a lot like that. You know, you, you, you come up on something and there's a lot of friction, a lot of friction. And then, you know, you break through the sound barrier or you break through you know, the, the fluid barrier on an object and you head in a new direction. And so for me, um, you know, I guess it's a bit symbolic for me heading off to a life as a musician, maybe too, uh, away from uh, my life as, uh, as a business person or an, or an engineer or a scientist. I love that. So um, where can people find your music? Um, you can find my music on uh, most of the major uh, streaming platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, yeah, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Heart uh, Amazon. Um, uh, you can also find my CDs for sale uh, on, on Amazon uh, directly, uh, as well mm -hmm. as uh, some music stores are carrying CDs still, but not, not many. No, uh, you're, there's yep. a few that have them. Uh, and they're on my website as well, markwintersmusic.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I also write poetry. Uh, I write haikus in particular, and I put ah. them to music. Uh, so you can find some musical haikus uh, on my Instagram page, on my reels uh, on Instagram, if you're so inclined to, to, to listen to haikus. 
Um, and of course you can find me on other social media platforms as well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to get you where to reach you, but, um, you talked about, are you, you, you're talking about touring, I guess, huh? Yeah, I've got a, um, I have a few shows. I have an album release party coming up in uh, Southwest Houston, March okay. 25th. Uh, okay. I'll be at South by Southwest in Austin. Very um, nice. I have a couple of showcases I'm playing there. I'm excited about that. Um, and then in June, I have a, a, a small tour I'm running up uh, through North Texas to Oklahoma City and back down to, to Houston. I'm going to okay. do that. It's my first time, well, first time to uh, really have a serious tour. Uh, and it's my first time to be on the road by myself. I usually have a four-piece band. Okay. So I'm doing the singer-songwriter journey. Yeah. Uh, I'm get to play some really great venues uh, all the way up and down the state of Texas. Uh, and then I've got another tour that I'm running into, down to Orlando in Florida and back. And I'm going to do that the same way. Well, I'm here in Dallas. So let me know when and where you're performing. And Linda and I will be there. And we'll get to meet in person. And I look forward to... Uh, checking out the music that would be awesome man I, I look forward to meeting you in person for sure jesse very nice all right so um i you know it sounds like um i i see i know you're on twitter at mark winters band then mark winters music.com uh and i take it from there we can find where your music and other social media links yeah, I'm not really a big Twitter person. Okay. Uh, there, uh, you can't, you know, you can't put Mark Winters music on Twitter. It doesn't fit. Yeah, There's not right. enough characters. Right. <laughs> so I lose a character. So I had to go for band there. I, I just don't, yeah. I'm not a Twitter person. So uh, you, mainly I'm, I'm on Instagram. Um, you know, I do have a YouTube channel as well. Um, but, uh, you know, you can find all of those links on markwintersmusic.com. Okay, good. Well, very nice. Um, any final thoughts you want to share me? Uh, you know, Jesse, I, I really appreciate you helping to create awareness for Music Beats Cancer. Um, and, you, know, you have a personal story to tell about it, and I really appreciate, you know, your passion about music uh, and about the community as well. Uh, it sounds like you're a wonderful person, and I'm really happy that I got a chance to speak with you. Yes, uh, it is musicbeatscancer.org slash artist slash Mark dash Winters. I will have it in the show notes. Uh, when does the fundraiser end? Uh, it ends March 13th. Okay, so guys, we've got a couple weeks left. Let's do what we can to help Mark reach his goal. Uh, for those of you who are listening, um, Mark asked for a pass on the Mary question. Um, he had been doing other things and had not done his homework. I told him no problem that I would, I just gives me excuse to have him back on again. Uh, and now that I know he's coming to Dallas, we're going to time this where I'm going to be able to promote the show, talk about it, and he'll do the Mary question then. Is that sounds like a deal? Sounds like a deal, Jesse. And I might even play a cover song for you uh, from Bruce, too. So oh, I, that, that sounds lovely. All right. Uh, listeners, please, please go get vaccinated. Go get boosted. Let's continue to be good to each other because that's the only way we're going to get through this. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, listeners. And we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Pushing at the supersonic speed. Every single day Where can I find the strength in me To break my boundaries and make me see Pushing at the supersonic speed I can see what I need Soaring faster and higher Breaking through I believe in me
I want and need your feedback. You can reach me multiple ways that tell me what you like or don't like about the show. You can reach out to give me guest suggestions or maybe to join me on the podcast yourself. We're on Twitter at SetLesslingBruce or at Jesse Jackson DFW. I have an Instagram, SetLustingBruce or Jesse Jackson DFW. Our Facebook page, facebook.com slash setlustingbruce. Go to patreon.com slash setlustingbruce to find out how you can support the show. And we have several tiers of support. Please go to your favorite podcast player and hit subscribe. And tell a friend about the podcast because that is the way we're going to grow. If you're not tired of hearing me speak, you can hear me on Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast, where Charles Skaggs and I talk all things Doctor Who, the How Many podcast, where me and my friends Gary, Scott, Bob, and Jr. talk pop culture, and finally, my newest podcast, the last Best Hope for Conversation, a Babylon 5 podcast, where Karen, Lou, and I are going through the TV show Babylon 5 one episode at a time. I am always looking for guests, so please reach out to me, setlustingbruce at gmail.com. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one the only said listening Bruce. The theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.